Hey, Congressman Doyle. Yeah, Mike Doyle. Uh, I'm one of your constituents. Uh, yeah, I'm a real constituent, not some guy that's been hired to uh, go on camera and tell everybody how wonderful you are and all the great things you've been doing for me. Uh, but a real constituent. I was just wondering where you've been. Uh, it's only a few days now till Election Day, and I know you've been home for a while, uh, So I, and I hadn't seen you anywhere, so I just wondered where you were. But you did uh, send me this really nice little... Uh, flyer, pretty slick, and probably I paid for it, but anyway, uh, I was just looking at it, and that, you know, you told me in the, in the flyer uh, what Congress has in, uh, been doing, and how hard you've been working for us, and so I guess, well, I guess through all that hard work you've been doing, you're probably pretty tired by now, so you just want to rest, so uh, I can understand that. So we'll just look at, you know, what you, you sent and told us uh, that you were doing. Uh, first, you said you're helping to turn the economy around. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, building up uh, trillions of dollars in debt and uh, uh, creating massive unemployment. Uh, I doesn't sound like we're turning around too much so far. And speaking of that, you said you're preserving and creating millions of American jobs. Well, I think with unemployment over 10 percent in, in many places, uh, that hasn't worked out too well either. And anyway, how, how does government uh, create jobs? I always wondered about that. Uh, other than government jobs, that is. Don't you think maybe you just turn the private sector loose on this one, and, since they know how to create jobs, real jobs? Uh, also, you said you're reforming our uh, banking laws to prevent uh, another financial meltdown. Um, now, you know, Mike, I, may I call you Mike? I noticed in that legislation that uh, you didn't address uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Uh, uh, and, and reforming them. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't they really one of the main reasons for the financial meltdown in the first place? Just ask it. Uh, all right, I notice also you've uh, been busy uh, making high-quality health care uh, affordable for all Americans. Frankly, I had no problem with the, the health care I had. It was fantastic. I couldn't ask for better, and I really think we have some of the best health care in the world here. But anyway, you decided you wanted to have even better health care. Uh, even the point, one thing, one active thing you did do, I, I know, there hadn't been too many things, but you uh, actually uh, were responsible for engineering the, the Stupac uh, amendment to get the bill passed. That's, you know, where you convinced Bart Stupac and his anti-abortion friends uh, not to worry about abortion funding in the bill. Well, anyway, uh, you managed to push that through. And uh, also, didn't it bother you that the majority of people didn't want the, the bill to begin with, and that same majority would like to have it repealed now. Oh well, this isn't really important what we think. Uh, after all, you guys know what's best for us, don't you? Well, anyway, uh, going on here, uh, you also talk about making college education more affordable, um, which brings up another another point to me. In, in the health care bill, uh, there's a thing on student loans. Now, according to that, a student can't go to a private lender now and negotiate a loan, but has to go to the government. And the good deal there is, see, you uh, borrow the, the money at 2%, then loan it to the student at 10%. Okay, good deal. That way you can take that extra 8% and help pay for the bill. Good deal for you, not so great for the student. Uh, well, I see here, Mike, you've also uh, been protecting consumers and uh, taxpayers. Uh, what have you been, I don't know what you've been protecting us from, but frankly, I really would rather you, you didn't. You've done enough to uh, protect us already. Uh, and I've managed pretty well myself uh, through common sense, there's that word again, and uh, education to, to protect myself. Thank you. Well, I guess you can't be, uh, be bothered with all that trivia. After all, you've run unopposed for years. Well, Mike, that's changed. There's this determined lady by the name of Melissa Halushak who's decided that she had enough and got herself on the ballot. So, Mike, while resting up after uh, all that hard work you've been doing for us in Washington, you know what she's doing? Every day she's up at the crack of dawn, sometimes in the dark. She's out with many volunteers, sign waving, greeting people in the district, going to work every morning. Then she goes, puts in a hard day's work as a paralegal. Then at night, after work, she comes back out again, waving and greeting people coming home from work. 
Then, after that, she and her volunteers are off to every neighborhood in your district, Mike, going door to door, talking to people face to face, asking about their concerns and, and what they expect from, from their elected officials. Then after that, she may go to a community event, and on weekends, she spends her weekends going to community events, finding out about the different communities in this district, and what the, who the people are in those communities, and what they're doing, and what they need. That's what she's doing, Mike. You know, Mike, Melissa pledges to go to Washington for no more than three terms, and then come home. Uh, she, like I, don't believe in career politicians. And once there, uh, she pledges to govern based on three things, three C's. First is the Constitution. You know, that pesky little law of the land that uh, you pledged to uphold and protect, then proceeded to shred. Yeah, the Constitution. Is the legislation constitutional? Second, conscience. You know, that nagging little thing that reminds you what if what you're doing is right or wrong, conscience. And third, but not least, her constituents. Is the proposed legislation right for my constituents? You know, those are the those hardworking people, Mike, that, that you expect to go to the polls every election day and dutifully pull the lever for that D. Well, those Ds are a lot smarter now, Mike, and so I think things are going to be a little different. So this year, I'm going to the polls and I'm voting for Melissa Halushak, a new voice in Washington.